Okay, so this is gonna be like my first time really doing this. Um, <laughs> I don't have a camera set up or anything like that, so I'm just literally recording this on my phone. Because um, recently, so I've been getting into Magic the Gathering lately, and it seems like a lot of people are now up in arms over this whole Magic the Gathering um, universes beyond thing. And a lot of people are like really pissed off about it. They're saying it's going to be ruining magic and all that jazz. I I don't necessarily feel like it's going to. And my main reason for saying that is because I took a look I took a look at the article. Okay, so the first paragraph reads, "Earlier today, we revealed an exciting expansion to of Magic the Gathering into the realms of Universes Beyond, a series that combines the gameplay of Magic the Gathering with worlds, characters, and stories that are cherished by millions of fans around the world. So, from what I'm getting from this article is that Universes Beyond is going to be its completely own series, like sitting next to our standard Magic the Gathering. It says it itself, a series that combines the gameplay of Magic the Gathering with worlds, characters, and stories that are cherished by millions of fans around the world. And a lot of people are saying, well, this is going to push um, the story of Magic the Gathering out of the way. And I don't see anywhere in this article that it states that it's going to combine with the main standard Magic the Gathering story. Because it, it doesn't say that anywhere. It says that it's going to combine the gameplay of Magic the Gathering. So, you know, you have a deck. Um, it's your library. You have mana. You, you play your lands. You tap your mana to summon creatures and use um, sorceries and artifacts and stuff like that. It's combining that gameplay, but with other IP worlds. Because, I mean, personally, I love the way Magic the Gathering is played. It's really the reason why I started getting into it again is because I like the system of having um, mana cards and um, tapping the mana in order to like summon a creature or cast an instant spell or whatever. Like that's a lot of fun. And they're literally just taking other IPs and they're putting them in the same realm as... Uh, you know, Magic the Gathering. So it says right here, among those worlds are the expansive universes of Warhammer 40k and the Lord of the Rings, with others set to join as our universes beyond expands. I mean, a lot of people are saying that, like, Warhammer 40k doesn't really fit with um, Magic the Gathering, but the thing is, is it doesn't really have to. Because Universes Beyond is, isn't going to be a story-driven um, card game like the original Magic the Gathering is. It literally sounds like it's just going to be its own series where we can have, um, you know, different sets of whatever IPs they end up putting in there. That's literally all it is. It says, this expansion of the Magic game system to other universes is exciting and new and certainly raises questions for many of our long-standing fans so today we're going to answer many of those questions as we look toward the universes beyond release in 2022 universes beyond will act as a brand within magic the gathering existing in addition to and alongside our existing line of products it's not going to be replacing magic the gathering it doesn't even sound like it's going to be melding with Magic the Gathering. It's literally going to be like Warhammer 40k is to Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Like, they're both two completely different things. You don't really mesh them together. I mean, you could probably if you and your friends just want to, you know, play a fun little game together. You guys could mesh them together. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Universes Beyond came about thanks to a simple thought. If we can expand 
our story beyond the game system to things like comics, novels, and other games, then surely we can expand the game system to let players explore worlds outside of the worlds of magic. So I'm wondering if that, that paragraph right there is really what people look at and they say that, oh, you know, they're going to expand uh, magic, the, the story of magic into like all these other IPs. But that's not necessarily what they're saying. They're saying that the thought they had was, if we can expand our story beyond the game system, which means their cards, to things like comics, novels, and other games, which means that, because what they did is they took Magic the Gathering and they made comics and novels and video games in of Magic the Gathering, then surely they can expand the game system, which would be the cards, to let other players explore worlds outside of magic. They aren't saying that they're going to be replacing the story with, you know, the IP is like The Walking Dead or whatever. They're not going to be adding The Walking Dead into the main story. They just made those Walking Dead cards, mainly for Secret Layer, although I believe later on in the article they actually state that they're going to, um, they might be incorporating it into uh, Universes Beyond, which, I mean, isn't that big of a deal. We are all fans of these other universes. Many of us imagined what it might be like to play a game of magic with Gandalf the Grey, sketched out how we might translate the One Ring to magic, or wanted to build a deck around the Mighty Space Marines. <laughs> that seems like a bit of a jump, though. I mean, you took two concepts of uh, Lord of the Rings, which is Gandalf the Grey and the One Ring, and then you jump directly into, like, a more futuristic... Gear 40,000 freaking man in giant armor <laughs> that crushes things with guns. Okay, um, in many ways, Universe is Beyond is us living out those dreams of our own. Nowhere do they state that it's going to push regular magic out of the way. Like, it's literally going to be a series alongside... Uh, Magic the Gathering. I'm basically making this because in the very beginning, I was actually kind of like thrown back by hearing all this stuff about like, you know, The Walking Dead Secret Lair had come out last year, which I kind of regret not getting into before because uh, my fiance actually freaking loves The Walking Dead and it would have been, and she's trying to get into Magic the Gathering. So uh, it would, you know, have her... Um, you know, get, get her some of the cards like Negan or Rick Grimes or whatever. But like, I was kind of thrown back by all that info as well. But like, after reading through the article, it doesn't really sound like they're trying to, it doesn't even sound like they're trying to like force it into Magic the Gathering. It's like, it's going to be its own like series on the side. Like, I mean, saying that it's going to ruin magic is like saying, well, Warhammer Age of Sigmar is going to ruin Warhammer 40k, which, uh, newsflash, it didn't. Age of Sigmar actually isn't doing nearly as good as a 40k is still. And technically speaking, Warhammer Fantasy came out first, I believe. And then 40k, but Fantasy wasn't nearly as interesting, I don't think, as, um... 40k was. 40k is when things really got insane. But no, I don't think it's going to ruin this, what, it's going to be like 28 years old or 29 next year, I'm pretty sure. Because it came out in 1993 and that's the year I was born. So it should be turning 29 next year. And I don't think that Universes Beyond is going to ruin a 29 year old game. Especially because it's still going really strong. But we also... Oh, this is another paragraph in the article that I really don't think is all that bad. But we also hope that Universes Beyond will bring the game we love to more people who might not have otherwise found us. We hope fans of these worlds and characters will find our game through Universes Beyond and we hope they'll stay a while and become part of our amazing community. They're literally stating, we hope that 
by bringing pe more people in through universes beyond, we hope that they'll find our main game, which is Magic the Gathering. So I don't think they're changing anything in Magic the Gathering. They're literally just bringing, bringing in universes beyond as like an IP crossover, but with Magic the Gathering um, gameplay, pretty much. We know you're curious about Universes Beyond. We can't answer everything you may be asking, but we are thrilled to set the table on a number of topics today. First, Universes Beyond will be branded slightly differently and will have a specific look as a result. These are still magic cards through and through, but the frame will be distinct and cards will have a hollow foil stamp that denotes them as being from Universes Beyond. It will look like this, and then it shows a picture of it, which I'm only in like a voice, a voice recording at this point, so you can just look up the article. If that stamp looks familiar, it's because it, it already exists on Secret Layer Cross Walking Dead's, Walking Dead cards, <laughs> which will be grandfathered into Universes Beyond, which does make me excited because, uh, I would love to still get my fiance some of those cards just for like a collection. On that note, Universes Beyond products will be generally be sold in all magic channels. These will not be strictly secret layer products. The Warhammer 40k Commander decks, for example, will be available everywhere. We currently sell Commander decks, as will the Lord of the Rings product. We may occasionally do associated secret layer products related to the main release, like the secret layer Godzilla lands when Ikoria layer of behemoths came out. Huh, I gotta look into that. There will also be the occasional standalone product like The Walking Dead, but the intention is to typically make universes beyond as available as any other magic product. That said, Universes Beyond cards will not be standard legal. Yeah, like right there, it says it won't be standard legal. So if you want to play like in a standard tournament or whatever, you won't be able to play Universes Beyond cards. We strive to make magic cards that are widely useful, but Universes Beyond will be above and well beyond our normal standard releases. So nothing much is changing with our normal cadence of releases for standard. This is purely a cool thing we're, we're doing in addition to all the other cool things we're already doing. To that end, it's worth noting that the upcoming Magic Set Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is not part of Universes Beyond. That's, I'm pretty sure, is all the D&D stuff. For now, we're reserving the Universes Beyond branding for worlds outside those built by Wizards of the Coast. As to whether the Forgotten Realms are now canonically part of Magic's multiverse, for now, the answer is no. Which, I mean, like, D&D already released the uh, Ravnica module a little while ago. And, like, it's basically just treated as a one-off, you know? I mean, D&D also released the Rick and Morty module. A freaking Rick and Morty module, and yet people aren't um, all over the place about that. They're just like, you know, I don't really care for Rick and Morty, not really going to buy it. There we go. I don't know of a whole lot of places that are running, you know, Rick and Morty adventures. But I mean, you can. I like Rick and Morty, but don't really care too much about a D&D &D game surrounding it. Um... But we may change our minds in the future if it makes sense and is a fun net positive for Magic and D&D. &D. Like, I'm not reading a whole lot of negative stuff in this. Because they're just stating that they're going to be making uh, a side series that, that probably isn't even going to have a story to it. It's just going to be different IPs but with Magic the Gathering cards. That's literally all it's going to be. And yet all these people are freaking out about how it's going to be changing everything. 
when it's like, I don't see it. I really don't. Finally, fans who have seen us try out a variety of treatments for cards featuring characters from other universes might wonder if we're utilizing the treatment from the Ikoria Godzilla cards, existing magic cards skinned with the alternate universe, or the treatment used for the Walking Dead alternate universe cards that stand on their own. The answer is both, but often we'll default to letting these cards stand on their own. We may find charming opportunities to do the reskinned versions of existing cards, and we'll continue to balance between the two as we move forward. Universes Beyond represents an exciting new and yes, different take on magic. We're ecstatic to geek out over some of our favorite stories, characters, and fandoms alongside all of you, and we look forward to sharing more on Universes Beyond as we get closer. And that's the article. But literally, nothing is changing in the standard Magic the Gathering format. Like, they're still literally stating that they're going to be coming out with, like, new expansions and everything next year, and it's not going to be halting anything. Universes Beyond is literally just, like, a side, a side thing for them. And all it's really doing is bringing in um, other popular IPs, but being able to challenge each other through magic cards. Because magic is a really fun card rule set. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting thing, though I don't think I'd really buy a whole lot of them. I like the original Magic the Gathering cards from, like, even, like, 93 all the way up until now with Kald, Kaldheim, I think, was the last one that, or is one of the latest ones that came out. I have to look. Yes, it is. It is Kaldheim. The whole Viking Norse Mythos set, which is freaking awesome. Still don't have my freaking Viking yet, but... I mean, I, I'm very mixed with it. Like, I don't really care that much. But at the same time, peop I'm seeing so many videos popping out of people just freaking out about how it's going to be changing everything in Magic. I mean, it might... We don't know yet because it's not until 2022, but from that article that people keep say, stating, like, it doesn't sound like it's going to change anything canonically. We're still wizards or planeswalkers that uh, cast spells and creatures from our libraries, you know. Like, that's still what we do. And I mean, I'm not entirely sure, like, how legal, um, like, the Walking Dead ca um, cards are. I checked it out on the website Scryfall, which I check out for, like, everything. I even build a um, tabletop simulator magic decks using uh, the images and stuff from uh, Scryfall all the time. It's a lot of fun. But even Scryfall uh, mentions that... It's not really legal in most formats, except for maybe, like, Legacy and Vintage, as well as Commander. Which, I mean, that would be kind of interesting to see a, a Commander deck based on a, um, Daryl from The Walking Dead, or Negan, or Rick Grimes, or whoever else. You know, I mean, Walking Dead at least somewhat fits with, like, a zombie theme, because there are zombie cards and all that jazz. Lord of the Rings somewhat fits because it's still, you know, medieval fantasy. Um, Warhammer 40k, kind of on the fence about, but they're stating that, well, they're, the, the, the Warhammer cards aren't really going to be set for, like, standard, like, like the standard magic um, formats aren't going to be, uh, like, the worlds beyond cards aren't going to be legal for those. So, so like universe or universes beyond. So universes beyond seriously just sounds like his own series. I mean, saying that it's going to kill Magic: The Gathering is just as bad as saying, uh, you know, like I said earlier, um, 
I'm sorry, it's early in the morning, so it's it's just like saying Warhammer Age of Sigmar is gonna kill Warhammer 40k, which newsflash, it's actually doing worse from what I've seen. I don't see nearly as many people playing Age of Sigmar as I do uh, 40k, which to be fair, 40k is really, really good, so... Yeah, I, I will more than likely be buying a 40k commander deck, though, because that's actually pretty sick. And I mean, I wouldn't say to shame anybody if they did want to buy and, like, run those decks either. Because at the end of the day, this is a card game, you know, which, like, a lot of people, even I know, still think that card games are for kids, even though, you know, this is pretty much the oldest, uh trading card game ever at this point. At least one that you can battle people with, if anything. But yeah, um, I, I wanted to make this video just because of the fact that it was kind of bothering me that all I was seeing was all these videos on YouTube of like people just absolutely bashing the living crap out of this idea when it's like, well, it's, it's not going to be forced upon you. They literally stated that they're not going to be standard legal. <laughs> so, like, I mean, that's if you're playing standard. Like, I'm still relatively new to Magic the Gathering. So, I'm kind of wondering, like, do they mean standard as in, like, if you're going to, like, tournaments and stuff, is it going to be, like, the 60-card standard? Or are they talking about, like, also playing commander in tournaments, they're not going to be legal? Because I know that the Walking Dead cards stated that they were going to be legal in Commander. But I don't know if, like, actual tournaments are going to be running that kind of stuff. Maybe, they, maybe they're just stating that on Scryfall because of the fact that it's, um... That they were from Secret Lair. And it's like, why make some magic cards when you're not even allowed to use them in anything... I mean, I sure do hope that we don't end up running into, like, official, um, what was, what were some of the things people were saying? Like, Gandalf equips Captain America's shield to block Lego Batman. I think that was, that was, uh, oh, what's his name? That was our professor for Magic the Gathering who stated that. And I do, I do like that, because, I mean, that would be pretty sad if that became, like, the set norm. Who knows? It might be. I might be completely wrong about everything and it might end up actually ruining <laughs> Magic the Gathering. But like from how the article stating it, uh, Universes Beyond is just going to be another series. It's going to be literally underneath the brand name of Magic the Gathering. So I don't think we should honestly be like freaking out and getting all angry about it. Yeah, I mean, really, that's all I have to say about the situation. Uh, we'll find out next year. Until then, um, I'm going to go and try to look for my Viking.